Shadows and fog can greatly enhance the mood of a scene, and they're easy to set up and sketch up. Let's take a look at shadows first. If you're casting shadows of a building, it's important that you geo-reference the building so that it's oriented properly with respect to the sun. You can't create user-defined light sources in SketchUp like you can in some other 3D applications. Instead, SketchUp has a system for simulating the sun, and it's based upon the actual celestial mechanics of the Earth-Sun system. So it depends on the time of day, time of year, and exactly where you're located on the Earth. So this whole process starts by geo-referencing your site. I'm going to get into that in greater detail when I talk about Google Earth. This particular model has already been geo-referenced, and you can click this button down in the lower left corner to open up model info to the location page. Here we can see that the actual latitude and longitude coordinates of this particular church have already been set. I'd like to just verify that the north angle is correct, so I'll check Show in Model. Let's close this and zoom out, orbit around, and take a look. So this image was imported from Google Earth, and you can see right up here that this is the north direction. So it's properly oriented. This yellow line is coincident with the green axis, and it represents the north direction. Going back into model info, I can toggle this off, and we get the familiar green axis back. If you didn't want to go into Google Earth and geo-reference it there, you can do it manually in SketchUp by showing the axis in the model and manually rotating this value. You can go ahead and just type in a value, and you'll see that the north angle will alter. This affects the way that the sun casts shadows. In this particular example, this should be set to zero. I'll open the shadows window and check display shadows. The top slider is for the time of day. The bottom slider is for the time of year, month slash day. It's hard to see this from this altitude, so I'm going to orbit around and zoom in. This site is in the northern hemisphere, so the sun would be to the south, and the shadows cast will be on the north side of the building. And you can see the shadows move around as I change the time of day and the time of year. It's a great way to help you design your building and figure out where the sunshade should be and how big the windows should be and so on. It can also be useful when you're considering the shadows and how they might affect the neighboring structures. Fog is also easy to simulate. Open the fog window and check Display Fog. The two sliders here are on the same scale of distance that's measured from zero at the picture plane all the way to infinity in the distance. Let me just orbit the scene so we can look off into the distance a little bit better. And the way you can read this is as follows. There's no fog from zero up to this point. Perfectly clear. And then the fog starts to ramp up from 0% up to 100% right here. And then after this point, it's 100% fog. So everything would be completely obscured by the fog color. If you want to make a sudden change from no fog to full fog, what you need to do is pull these sliders closer together. This creates kind of like a wall of fog effect, where we have a very sudden transition where everything is obscured after that point. And you see, as I rotate around, this fog plane moves because it's really a function of distance away from the picture plane. A more realistic fog is one where these sliders aren't so close together. Separate them a bit to have more of a gradient between where the fog begins and where it transitions up to full 100%. As far as fog color goes, you can either use the background color as defined in the style, or you can uncheck this and set a custom fog color here. I'll change the color to more of a white by dragging the target to the center of the color wheel. And then I'll drag this up to have a higher value to make the fog a little bit brighter. So one of the reasons we use fog is to create this mood, this atmosphere, which is appropriate for this church. But another reason that we might use fog is to obscure things like what we see over here. This edge of this terrain is dropping off. We want to kind of hide this illusion by pulling the fog in a little closer to us, 
in the distance. Maybe I'll pull this back a little bit so we can still see the church. But in this way, I can hide the edges of my environment to create a more convincing illusion. Scenes are a powerful feature in SketchUp that allow you to store and recall lots of different types of information. At the most basic level, scenes allow you to toggle between different camera positions. So it's like creating a three-dimensional bookmark. We'll get into some of the more advanced uses of scenes shortly, but first let's talk about basic scene mechanics. That is how to create, recall, and update scenes. To create your first scene, you have to go to the Scenes window. Click the plus button to add a page. Change your point of view by orbiting or panning and create a second scene. Up at the top of the screen we have different buttons called pages that allow you to access the different scenes you've already saved. I can just click on scene 1 to go to that camera position. So this is a convenient way to move through space and it's the basis of animation. If you want to change a scene you could delete it and create another one, but a quicker way is just to make the change and then update the scene by right-clicking on the page. You can then choose Update. Now the new camera position has been stored in Scene 2. Once you have some pages up here, you can use the functionality in the right-click menu instead of using the Scenes window if you prefer. For example, I can orbit to a new orientation, right-click and choose Add to create Scene 3. You can reorder scenes by clicking them here in the Scenes window and using these arrows to move them up and down in this list. Now that you understand basic scene mechanics, I'd like to show you a more advanced example. This file was created by Joe Zay, who writes a column in Fine Woodworking. He designs his furniture in SketchUp. As you can see from all the pages at the top, Joe makes extensive use of scenes, and I can't really make out what these refer to because the page sizes are so small. So I'm going to open the Scenes window and open this up. Let's just go through some of the scenes. In the exploded view, we move over to the side where Joe has pulled all the pieces apart and he's identified them using dimensions and screen text. Some of the scenes are in parallel projection mode, such as this one, where he has measured dimensions. Some of the scenes use different features of a style such as this one in X-ray mode. You see the style information can be stored in a scene. Click this button to access the full amount of information that is stored within a scene. And you can see right here, all of these different properties can be saved in each scene. Furthermore, Joe has created, in effect, a set of shop drawings within a single SketchUp file by using these scenes. And he does that by toggling layers on and off. You see, these dimensions on this piece of wood are on a specific layer that is shown just in this scene. I'll open the Layers window, and you can see what's happening here. I'll go to another scene, and a different layer is turned on. This gives us information specific to this piece of wood. So Joe is able to manufacture this entire piece of furniture from the information in this single SketchUp file. Keeps everything very organized, as you can appreciate. I'd like to show you another example of scenes, and for this I've opened the Components window. I've done a search for Scene and Section, and I've come up with a list of different files here. And I notice that Bonnie Rosks is mentioned here a couple of times, and she's written a book on SketchUp which is highly recommended. I'm going to click on the word here rather than the icon so that I can open up the little browser. I'll click on Conic Shapes, and here we see it in the browser showing us what's available in 3D Warehouse. I'll click Download Model, but notice down here that she's warning you, do not load it directly into an open SketchUp model. The reason for that is if you do, you won't get any of the scenes. The preferred method is to download the model, and when you're asked this question, you should say no, because you don't want to load it directly into your model. If you say no, you have an opportunity to save it on your hard drive. and then you can go ahead and open that from your hard drive and it will contain the scenes. Now Bonnie has created a tutorial using scenes. We just go to scene 2 to continue learning about this 
And as I do that, see what's happening here. We have a section plane that's animated during this scene transition. We can see that when we take a section of this cone, we get a circle. Go to scene three, and the section plane rotates. So this is an advanced use of scenes in two respects. It's a tutorial based on scenes, and it's showing you animated section planes. On the most basic level, you saw how scenes can store camera locations. A more advanced way of looking at scenes, however, is to not include the camera location. Let's just see what's possible if we approach it that way. I'll uncheck Camera Location in the Properties to Save, and I'll create a scene. Then I'll go ahead and open up the Layers window, and turn off the roof. Save a new scene. Let's say we want to make some changes to the style. Let's open up the Styles window, and go into Monochrome mode. I'll create a new style for this, and save a scene. Then I'll go into X-ray mode, create a new style for this, and save a scene. Let's see what we have here. I'm going to go back to Select, and let's just see what happens when I go through. Scene 1 has us in the normal mode. Scene 2 takes away the roof. Scene 3 goes into monochrome. And Scene 4 goes into X-ray mode. Now these scenes work from any camera position. So I can go over here, zoom in, go to Scene 2, and I can see it in texture mode, or in monochrome mode, or in X-ray mode. I can see the roof in Scene 1. So this advanced use of scenes allows you to toggle through layer settings and style settings while giving you the flexibility of moving the camera around independently.